will be multitasking. I'm going to be reviewing the No, no More Oops bead tray and I'm also going to be making this little bracelet right here for you. I have done it in holiday themed colors. Of course you can do this in any type of color scheming that you would like. It does not have to be holiday themed, but because of the time of year it is, I have decided to go ahead and make mine holiday themed. Um, I'm calling it the pipe work bracelet because of the fact that when you look closely, it looks, oops, it's a little too close. It looks like pipe work, the way that the um, seed beads kind of snake through it. So that's what I'm calling that. And this is the tray I will be reviewing. This tray is called the No, no More Oops bead tray. You can get it at lakesidejewelry.x. Etsy.com. I will put that in caption here so that you can see exactly where to get it if you are interested. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. Okay, let's look at the material list. As you can see, I have put all the beads I'm going to be using in my norm No More Oops bead tray, which you can get at lakesidejewelry.etsy.com. I'll put that up here in caption so that you can see that. I will also put it in a link in the description of the box beneath the video so that you can go get one yourself if you would like one. What I like about this is that I can set it right on my bead mat surface, right on my work surface, even while I'm doing my tutorials and it doesn't move, it doesn't spill, it divides my beads so that they don't mix together, which I have an issue with. I mix them together and then I have to spend all kinds of time separating them to put them away. And then I end up inevitably with beads mixed together when I get them out again. So this is going to help tremendously with that problem. I also like it because you can fit several different sizes of beads in the tray. It doesn't have to be just seed beads. I also like it because you can put just enough so that you can spread it out and you can pick up your beads directly from the bead tray because it is made of bead mat material it holds them up so that you can pick them up I like that it's really very convenient to use and it keeps everything organized and neat because I have a tendency to get everything all jumbled as I'm working. I can also put it on my bead tray if I happen to be beading it take my beads to my lazy boy chair or whatever. I can lay this right in my bead tray, fits right in there and keeps my beads organized and keeps them from rolling around. I like that. So what we're going to use today is we are going to use, oh and we also have labels up here so if you're doing a peyote with pattern with a bunch of different colors you can keep track of your colors um, because of the labeling here. So what we're going to be using is a toggle clasp <clears throat> and we're going to be using two colors of 11 seed beads. I am using Starlight which is the galvanized gold tone Toho and I'm going to also be using a pearlized opaque cream Toho for my two colors of 11 O's. Then I'm going to be using 8 O and 15 O seed beads. They are also the galvanized gold tone starlight in the Toho line. And then I will be using two colors of cubes. And I've put I've spread them out in the two sections of the trays just so they're easier to pick up. But I have um, this is kind of an opal um, a B finished Chinese crystal cube and this is a red A B finished crystal cube. And you can get these um, crystal cubes at ChineseCrystalBeads.com or at ZNetShows.com or you can find them on eBay. You can find them several places. They're just your basic 4 millimeter crystal cube in Chinese crystal. Then I am going to be using some Nanofill today. I will be using 10 pound. You can use 8 pound um, or 10 pound Nanofill or you can use 6 or 8 pound um, Fireline. Probably we're going to travel through these beads a lot so you may want to stick with 8 pound Nanofill though I'm going to use a 10. It seems to work fine. And you may want to use a 6 pound 
fire line, though I am sure 8 will probably work well too. I'm also going to be using a size 10 beading needle and we will thread onto our needle about a full wingspan. You can do two if you'd like. Otherwise, just put a comfortable length and know that you will have to extend your fire line as you work through your project. So I'm going to go ahead and put a wingspan onto my needle and we'll okay. be back. So I have threaded my needle and to start this project, I'm going to pick up three 11 seed beads in my cream color. And then I'm going to pick up an 8 and then I'm going to pick up one color of my cube and then an 8 and then the second color of my cubes and then an 8 and then I'm going to pick up three 11 seed beads my cream color like so I'm going to bring these down just because I don't want them to be in my way anymore so I'm just going to bring them down leave myself a tail so that it doesn't fall off and then I am going to pick up an 8 and then I'm going to pick up the opposite color of cube so the first cube I picked up I will pick up again I'm going to pick up a white cube and then I'm going to pick up an 8 and then I'm going to pick up a red cube and then an 8 and I'm going to bring this down I'm going to move this all to the end of my thread and just leave enough room so that I can tie a knot so let me get you a little closer so you can see what I'm doing I am just taking my tail thread and I'm going to tie a knot and I'm going to tie it a little distance away from my beads so that I don't involve them in my knot and bring it down and then I will tighten that knot like so so I just have a circle of beads tighten that up there and if you find, like I do, my thread always slips out of my hands, it's hard for me to tighten up that knot, I'll just pick up my um, pliers, I'll put my thumb on the knot and hold on to it and just kind of pull either side, like so. And that's tightened up my knot now. And now I'm going to sew back around this entire unit here. So I'll just go back down into my 11 O's. This first unit we'll sew through quite a bit, so that's why I kind of suggest using the smaller weight of thread because um, we will be sewing through these units quite a bit. So I'm just going to sew all the way back around. And now I'm back where I started. I'm going to just kind of move my tail all the way and then I'm going to go into these three 11 o seed beads here. And I'm going to pick up three gold 11 o's now. And I'm just going to do a ladder stitch. So I'm coming out of this end of these three 11 o's. I'm going to go into all three on the opposite end like so and pull my three gold beads down. Straighten them out, come back up through them so that I can secure them and then I will come back down into the three cream 11 O's here. Now I am going to sew into the 8 O. so I'm coming out of these 11 O's here. I'm now going to, let's get just a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. I am now going to go into this 8 O and this first cube and I'm going to exit the second 8 -o. So just go through this 8 the cube and the 8 and exit. And then I'm going to pick up one of my cream color 11 O's and I am going to go from this 8 into the 8 on the opposite side between the opposite crystals like so. And I'm going to pull this bead into the center It wants to go on the other side, and I don't want it to up here, like so. Now, what you're going to do is just kind of lift those eight O's towards the ends of your um, cubes as you do this. So instead of them being right in the middle, you're you're going to kind of lift them as you do this, and then you're going to pick up another 11 O seed bead. 
you're now coming out of this 8O in between the crystals. You're going to go into the opposite 8O on the, on the same side. So you're just going to go straight across and go through just this 8O seed bead. Now we're just going to pull this all down. And this gets easier to handle as you get your first unit complete, then it's pretty easy to handle. The first one is kind of awkward. Now we're coming out of this 8 seed bead right here. So what we're going to do is just sew through these beads in the center and secure them. So we'll go into the first 11 we put on here. As you do this, give a little tug so that you get some nice tension. Go into the 8 here. And pull, go into the 11 0 here and pull. Oops, got my lamp. And then go into this 8 0 here between the crystals. And you can also go into the crystal behind it like this. Pull this tight. And now you're coming out of the crystal. You'll go into this 8 0 right behind it. You could do that in one movement too if you'd like. You don't have to exit. Now everything should be kind of a rectangular shape now. Now come down into the 11 0s here. And then pick up three gold 11 0s. You're coming out of this side, we're going to go into the opposite side and go into all three of those 11 O's. Pull these 11 O's down on top of them and then sew back up through them. Hold your thumb and your finger on it so that you can pull and get some good tension and you don't get everything all out of whack. And then go into the beads that you started in. You're attaching beads the beads you're attaching to, I should say. And then back up through your gold. Now, as you can see, we're sewing through these quite a few times, so that's why you may want to go down to a size 12 needle or a, a um, smaller pound fire line. Now we're going to pick up three more 11 OC beads in our original cream color, the first color we started in, and we're going to go back up through the opposite side of the gold beads that we just put on. And then back down through the cream beads. Sorry, I'm tangled. Pull everything out of place here. And then back up through the gold beads here. Now, we're coming out of the gold beads. We're going to go back down into these cream beads. Make sure that your tension is good so that you don't have a whole bunch of thread sticking out at the top and everything looks nice and neat and lined up. Once you're there, then we're going to make another unit with our 8 and cubes. So what you need to do now, let's back off so you can see this cute little tray here, is we're going to pick up an 8 seed bead and then I'm going to pick up a red, since I have white here, I'm going to pick up a red cube and then I'm going to pick up a 8 0 seed bead and then a white cube and an 8 0 seed bead and then three of my cream color 11 O's. I'm going to drop these down to my piece and I am then going to pick up an 8 0 and then a red cube since I have a white one here I want a red one across from it so I'll pick up red and then I'm going to pick up an 8 0, and then I'm going to pick up a white cube and an 8 0. So, what you should have onto your thread is 8 0 red cube, 8 0 white cube, 8 0 3 11 0s, 8 0 red cube, 8 0 white cube, 8 0. We will be connecting to these three 11 0s so you do not need two sets of them this time. 
So now we're going to use this set and we're going to come into the opposite side from which we're coming out of. And we're going to bring these into a loop like so. Now we are going to sew into the 8 next to the 11 as we're coming out of. And we're just going to sew all the way over, all the way around. You could stop in the middle and put your middle beads in now, but I don't believe that it helps keep the unit nice and neat or strong. So I'm just going to sew all the way around the entire piece. Go back into my 311 O's here that I'm connecting to, right here. And then I will sew into my middle 8 0. So I'll sew into this 8 0, this crystal, and exit this middle 8 0. Right here. And pull. And then I will pick up a cream colored 11 0. And I will go into the opposite 8 0 in the center of the crystals on the same side I'm coming out of. So I'm coming out here, I'm going to go in here. As I do this, I will pull my 8 0 to the inside of my crystals. Just got everything all out of whack there. Just straighten it back up if you do. And now I need to put another 11 0 on this side. So I'll pick up another cream 11 0. And I'll go into the opposite 8 0 on the same side. So I'm coming out here. I'm going to go in right here. And pull this down into the center. So these 8 0s should move into the inside, and that allows room for your 11 0s and your crystals to lay nicely against each other. Then we will sew up around all four of these beads. So I just went into the 11 0 from the 8 0. Now I'm going to go into this 8 0. I put my thumb over the top just to guide my thread and keep my tension. I'll go into this 11 0 here and into this 8 0 here after I've secured it. And then I'll go through the cube and the 8 0 behind the cube here. and up into my 11 -0 seed beads. And now we have two units. Now we'll pick up three 11 -0 seed beads and we are coming out of this side. We're going to go into the opposite side. We'll make one more unit and then we'll go to length. So we're coming out of the 11 -0s now, the cream ones. We'll go back down into the gold ones back up into the cream ones and then down into the gold ones. And then we will pick up three 11 0 seed beads of the cream color and do the same thing. Go into the opposite side, pull them down, then secure them by sewing through both sets the cream, and then the gold. Pull tight so that your thread isn't buckled on top. And then go back into the cream. And here again, we will pick up our series for our next unit. That unit is complete. And if your units are a little messy, you can always sew back through them before you begin your next one to straighten them out, if you'd like. I think that the, this one looks fine. So now I am going to pick up my next series. Sorry, I'm out of focus here. Okay, I'm going to pick up my next series of beads. Hopefully you can see me well. I am going to pick up an 8 seed bead and then I'll pick up a white cube because I have a red one here so that always tells me what my next color will be so that my colors alternate and then I'm going to pick up an 8 seed bead then I'm going to pick up a red cube and an 8 seed bead 
and then three 11 o seed beads. Like so. And see how I can pick them right up out of my tray. That's nice, and nothing's getting messed up. It's really nice. So now I'm going to then pick up an 8 seed bead and a white crystal, an 8 seed bead, a red crystal, an 8 seed bead, and that's all I need because I will use these three 11 O's for my next. So let's look and see what we have on our thread. So you have your series of 8 -0. Crystal, 80, crystal, 80, 311 O's, 80, crystal, 80, crystal, 80, and then slide up through the 311 O's on the opposite end you're coming out of onto your piece and bring these into a loop like so. I'm going to turn my piece and get you in a little closer so you can just see how to do this last one and then we'll go to length. So I'm going to go ahead and sew around this entire unit to secure it. So just sew all your beads just like we have been doing. And once you get back, go back up through the 11 o seed beads you're attaching to. And then sew to the middle 8 -0. so 8 -0, crystal, 8 -0, and exit, right there. Let's squish them together here. Pick up an 11 -0 seed bead and go into the 11 -0 opposite the one you're coming out of on the same side you're coming out of, right there. As you pull this bead in, kind of pull up on your thread and that will cinch your eight in towards the inside. And then pick up another 11 o And go into the opposite 8 o And just the 8 o Exit that 8 o and pull everything nice and neat. And then sew through all four of those beads in the center. As you come out of this 8 0 here, go into the crystal and the 8 0 behind it. Pull tight and you're ready to begin another unit. So first we have to go through our 8-0's and add a layer of gold, or not 8-0's, 11-0's, add a layer of gold 11-0's, add a layer of cream 11-0's, put on your unit beads and continue sewing it together just as we did the first three units. Once you have eight units, we will be back. Okay, so as you can see, I have made my eight units, and you'll just count the center four so that you uh, include your entire unit. So one, two, three, four, and so on. So I have made eight units, and this will make a little over a seven inch bracelet. It may be um, seven and a half, seven and a quarter, something like that. If you want a longer or shorter bracelet, you will have to exclude a unit or add more of your ladder stitch units at the end to give you a little bit more length. Um, if you are a very small person, just eliminate one unit. If you're a large person, add a unit. If you're somewhere in between and you're just trying to adjust it, then you'll just have to adjust it with extra units of your ladder stitch. Now I'm coming out of my very last ladder stitch here in the gold beads. I am going to grab one end of my toggle clasp and I am going to pick up one cream 11 o seed bead and then I'm going to pick up one gold 8 o seed bead like so. So 11 o and an 8 o. I'm going to drop this down and I am going to then go through my clasp. A little too close. Let's back off a little here. Go through the clasp 
and then slide back down through just the Edo seed bead. Like so. I'm just going to pick these up and hold on to them and pull my thread through. Slide this down to the Edo. And then I will pick up another 11 0 seed bead. And get you in a little closer so you can see. I have my 11 0. I'm going to go into the opposite side from which I started of the three gold beads here, the three 11 0s, and pull this down. And that is what you should have. Now we're going to sew back up through all of these beads and through the clasp several times just to secure it. So I will go up through my 11 0 through this 11 -0, around my clasp, or excuse me, up through my 11 -0, up through the 8 -0, around the clasp, back down into the 8 -0, into the 11 -0, and back through the three beads. And we will do that two or three times, enough until you feel like this is nice and secure, and we will be back. Okay, so as you can see, I have secured my um, clasping now, and I'm coming out of my gold beads, which I had attached my clasping to. Now I'm going to come up into the next set of 11 O's. The very first set we um, put onto our um, bracelet, the cream colored set. And then we're going to start our embellishment. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up through this 8 o seed bead right next to the 11 o's we're coming out of. And then we will go into the crystal right next to it. And pull your thread through. Now we will pick up two 15 o seed beads. Like so. And we will go into the very next cube. So just over the top of this 8 between them into the next cube and then you can exit the 8 behind the cube also. So just pull these in. This is going to cinch up the bracelet, bracelet a little bit. That's why it may seem like it's going to be a lot longer from what I told you in the beginning. It's going to be um, a 7 inch. It's because this, is going, this step is going to cinch this up a little bit and make it shorter. So now we're going to pick up a 15 o seed bead. We're coming out of this 8 o seed bead. We're going to pick up a 15 o and we're going to go down into these three 11 o's in the center of the set of three 11 o ladder stitches. So just directly from the 8 o into the gold 11 o's. As you do this, Squish your piece together so that these gold um, 11 O's rise up a little bit above the cream 11 O's. So the, just the center row. If you're not using different colors, it doesn't matter. So the center row needs to rise up above the um, two outside rows of 11 O's. Then pick up a 15 O seed bead and go into the, you're coming out of these 11 O's here, go into the 8 O here, the crystal behind it also, and pull. Now this should help you raise that row up in the middle. Make sure your tension stays good, keeping that row lifted. And then pick up two 15 O seed beads and go into the next cube. So you're coming out of this cube, we're going to go into this cube. And then we're going to go to into the 8 o behind that cube too. So we're going over the 8 o that's between the cubes and then into the 8 o behind the cube. Like so. Then you're going to pick up a 15 o seed bead. Like so. And you're going to go into these three 11 O's in the center. As you do that, you can raise it up around your needle, that row. Pull this into the 8 O and squish those 11 O's up. 
like so. And then pick up a 15 ohm seed bead and go into the next 8 o and the cube behind it. Pull tightly so that it lifts that row of 8 o's so you have a fluid movement here. Make sure as you do this you straighten your bracelet as you're doing it because it wants to kind of tangle and you want it to be a very fluid look like it, the beads are just running snake-like through it. So you have to um, straighten as you do this. You can't just put them in and pull on it and expect it to look great. It's not going to. So this is how I want mine to look. And then I'm coming out of this cube, so I'll pick up my two 15 O's. And we'll just work through the whole bracelet doing exactly the same thing. Go into the next cube here and the 8 o behind it. Pull that tight and that should help with your last embellishment tightening it up and making it nice and neat. And then pick up your 15 o go into the center 11 o's and so on. Continue doing this embellishment. Lift those center beads up pull that down. Continue doing this embellishment the entire length of the bracelet and we will be back. Okay, so as you can see I have finished my embellishment and once it's finished you'll see you have this kind of pipework look. So you want the 15 -0 to raise up your 11 O's and smoothly transition into the cubes which will put two uh, 15 nodes between and that kind of makes kind of a pipework look or a snaked look and then we're going to after we finished our very last embellishment which would be the two 11 nodes between the two cubes here I'm coming out of the 8 here I'm now going to go down into the 11 nodes right next to the 8 o so it will be my cream colored ones now my knot is inside here from when I very first tied it so it's difficult for me to pass through so I am going to grab that's why I don't like to tie knots but it served a purpose so I'm going to pull my needle through with my pliers and then I'm going to connect up through these three 11 O's here I hope I was in frame let me back off that's why I wanted to add the extra set there also is because I knew I wouldn't have any issues running through that and sewing through it several times for my clasping. I'm going to cut this tail and burn it down just to get it out of my way. Um, it's a little long. And then I will attach my clasp on this end. Make sure you protect your th working thread as you melt down your little tail there and then I will pick up an 11-0, an 8 and the other end of my clasp. I will go up through my clasp like so and then I will go through the 8 and only the 8 just like we did on the other side. Pull this down and then I'll pick up an 11 o and go through the three gold 11 o's here <laughs> there we go and I'll sew through that a few times to make sure that it's secure and then sew up through my work a little bit tie a few knots and cut off my thread and when we have finished that, we will be back. Okay, so I finished my bracelet, and as you can see, it is exactly a seven inch bracelet. It cinched it in quite a bit. So if you have a bigger wrist, you may want to go ahead and go one more unit. If you're anything above a seven inch, you'll want to go one more unit. I'm about six and a half inches, and this feels, because of the room it takes up on my wrist, it feels like I could have gone a little bit bigger, but of course I like my bracelets to have quite a bit of movement. This is fine and good, but you know, it's good. I like it. It's, it turned out really nice actually. So this is what it looks like 
Let me show you the clasping. There's the clasping. This is what it looks like on the wrist. Very, very pretty. Nice little holiday looking bracelet. And um, let me show you the bead board one more time. Um, and this is called the normal No More Oops bead tray. Let's get close so you can see the all the information here. And um, I really, as far as the review goes, I really liked it. You can see everything's still in place. I can just grab my bead scoop now and I can just put away my beads. And that's really nice. That makes my life a lot better because, like I said, as I'm working, I always end up mixing my 8-0s and my 11-0s or different colors of the same size bead or something together. And then the next time I get them out, I've always got a few strays mixed in. And it, that's fine, except for if I'm not paying attention, I'll pick them up in my pattern and then I'll have to break it out or I'll have to restitch it or take it out because I, I, I do stuff like that. But anyway... I really enjoyed using this and I think you guys will find it helpful too. Like I said, what's really nice about it is you can set this right in your beadboard too. Um, it makes a big difference and you can carry it around with you um, from room to room and do your beading and your beads won't get all mixed up together. And that for me is going to be a huge thing because I like to take my beadboard and go sit in a, the Lazy Boy and watch TV and the minute I move, I've got my beads all jumbled up together. This is going to be a big deal for me to keep that from happening. Anyway, that's that, and this is the project. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.